Cool. And hello, hello. So I guess I mentioned, grab two blocks, place them at the top of your mat, and we are going to start seated today, actually. Get this mic set up for us. So as you come into a seated position, I would recommend coming into Sukhasana. So cross at the shins and find yourself grounded. Observe for a moment which shin is in front and close your eyes. Bring your palms onto the tops of your thighs. Pull the gaze down and in. And take a full breath in through the nose. Open mouth, exhale. Just let go of your day. Inhale through the nose. Exhale out the mouth. And seal your lips, inhale from your belly, your chest, your collarbones. And exhale out the collarbones, out the belly, out the chest. If you're just joining, I've just placed the playlist into the chat. Go ahead and press play whenever you're ready. Meet us in a seated position. So for today, for this week, I have been focusing a lot on santosha or this idea of contentment and gratitude. I don't know how many of you are familiar with this concept, but it's this idea of being enough. And I think in today's society, especially now that we're so interconnected and there's so much opportunity for us to look and strive and aspire, that sometimes it's helpful to appreciate where we're at right here, right now, and be content with what is, rather than trying to continue to reach, 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 and look forward and forward and forward, but appreciate the present. And so for today's practice, I challenge you all to play and sit with this idea of being enough, having enough. Can this practice be sufficient in what it is today, wherever your body decides to show up. And slowly flutter your eyes open and switch out your crossing so right shin may come in front. Reach the arms out forward in front of you and you're going to protract your shoulders forward which means that you're going to fill the space between the shoulder blades and then draw your shoulders up toward your ears retract, pull the shoulders back. You may feel a little bit of crunchies in the back and then draw the shoulder blades down the back. So you're just gonna do that a couple times, big, shul big shoulder shrugs, forward, up, back, down. I know for me, there's like little crunchy spots right as I drop my shoulders down toward the earth. So just observe how that feels and where there may be a couple of spots tight spots or spaces that need a little bit of love, and then switch out the circle. So move forward first, go down, back, and up. So we're just isolating the shoulders. We're gonna get really deep into the chest opening, some hamstring work today. And then slowly release your hands onto your thighs, a little bit of neck too. So drop the right ear down toward the right shoulder. Bring your chin down to your chest. Bring your left ear to left shoulder and then gaze up toward the sky and come all the way back around to the right. So you're just going to take big head rolls toward the left to start and stop in any space that you can feel those little crunchies. I don't know what to call them, so I'm just going to call them little crunchy spots and then switch out other side. Going down, bring your chin to your chest, right ear to right shoulder. Gaze up toward the sky. And again, we're not doing anything too crazy yet in the body, but allow yourself to observe even this simple movement of rolling the head. And then slowly bring yourself back to neutral. And then find your way into a tabletop position. Stack your shoulders directly over your wrists. Just a few cat cows to start to warm up the body. Drop the belly, scoop the heart forward. Inhale. Exhale, cat pose, press your mat away. 
gaze between the thighs. Inhale, belly drops. Observe the same movements in the shoulders here. Exhale, protract, press down to the palms, lift in between the space between the shoulders. A few more on your own. Add or subtract anything you might want, maybe a little bit more of a fluid movement through the hips, tapping the tops of the feet out, whatever your body's really craving here in this pose, in this moment. Meeting yourself on your mat today. And we'll arrive back into that neutral tabletop position. So you're going to just extend your right leg back. Keep the toes on the mat. Listen here, friends, a little bit of um, a introducing you to where we'll go later on in class. So lift the right foot off the mat. You're going to keep the toes dialed down toward the mat. Shift forward, chaturanga push-up. Maybe bring your shoulders down toward those blocks if they're in front of you. Press back up and then bring the knee into the nose, carve it in. So you're just gonna do two more like that. Inhale, extend the leg back. Exhale, drop down, tap shoulders down toward earth. Inhale, press back up. Exhale, draw knee to nose. Last one, inhale, reach leg back. Exhale, bend elbows. Inhale, press back up. Exhale, bring knee to nose. Come back to neutral tabletop position. Extend left foot back this time. So the toes are grounded on the earth. Dial down the left hip so it's in line with the right. And then lift left toes off of the mat. Can you lift through your low belly and soften your front ribs down? Shift forward six inches. Lower down push up. Press back up. Bring your knee to your nose. Two more like that. Inhale, extend leg back. Lower down, exhale. Press back up and bring the knee to the nose. Last one, inhale, find length. Exhale, tap down. Inhale, press back up and then exhale. Bring your knee to your nose. Nice work, guys. Come right back to that neutral tabletop position. A little bit more of a passive stretch. Inhale, right arm high. Exhale, thread the right shoulder onto the mat. Reach the right arm across the body. Maybe walk left fingertips toward the top of the mat. And notice here if you can ground down evenly into your shins. Find length evenly through your right and left sides of your body. And then from here, you can keep the left palm forward or even bring it back next to your face. Those are the two options you have. Staying here with both shins down or extend left leg back. Maybe lift left leg off of the mat. Yogi's choice. Lots of layers. Find what serves you today in this moment. Big breath. And exhale, release left knee down if it's floating. Ground down into the left palm. Inhale, reach right arm high to the sky like a wing. And exhale, release right hand down. Switching it out, other side. Inhale, lift left arm high. Exhale, thread the le left palm through and behind the right forearm. Drop your left ear down toward the mat. And a couple of options. You can walk your right hand forward, keeping the palm on the mat, or just keep the hand right next to the face, whichever you prefer. But again, notice if your shins have equal energy in both of them. Can you press down evenly? Feel the low belly lift. And maybe, just maybe, begin to reach the right leg back and lift it off of the mat. So a little bit of a balance challenge here. Stabilize through the core. Drive back through your right heel, last breath. And exhale, release right knee onto the mat. Place the palm next to your face again. Left arm high, inhale. Exhale, release palm down to the mat. Tuck the toes under, downward facing dog. Just lift it up and back. Give yourself a moment here. Drive the right heel down to the mat, bending your left knee. Switch it out other side. Just take your dog for a walk. And finally, meet yourself in this relative place of stillness. So bend the knees a lot as much as you need. Can you drive sitting bones up and back to where the back wall and the sky meet? As you do that, find space along the side of your body. 
press down into the palms strongly and feel the upper arm bones firm and inward. Big breath in. Smooth breath out. Can you hear the whisper of the breath? Inhale through the nose. Exhale out the nose. Hover right foot. Inhale, three-legged down dog kick. Glide right leg up and high. Listen here, friends. You're just going to shift forward into a single leg plank. Hover right foot so it's right next to the left, as if I could barely tell that you were hovering the foot. An option is to drop down onto your knees or take a regular plank. If you can keep the foot hovering, can you chaturanga push up down? Press back up and then lift right leg high, three-legged down dog kick. Bend the knee, open the hip. Just let it feel nice. Drop down through the inner left heel. Feel the rebound up through the right knee toward the sky. And then dial down the right toes, three-legged down dog kick. So square the hips down toward the mat. And then release right foot down toward the ground. Switching it out, other side, left leg flo floats up, three-legged down dog kick. Dial down the toes to the mat first. And then shift forward, single leg plank. So again, if I were to peek forward over toward your little boxes, I would not be able to tell the foot's hovering. Maybe you even decide to put the toes back down onto the mat. Take a chaturanga push-up lower down halfway. Press back up plank. Three-legged down dog kick. Inhale and then bend the knee. Open up the hip with the exhale. So even though you're bending your knee, can you continue to draw your right sitting bone back? toward the back of the room. So it's as if your right side of your body is still in that three-legged, or rather downward facing dog. It's just the left side of the body that's a little different. Dial down the left toes, three-legged down dog kick, and then release right left foot next to right foot. Come back to that neutral downward facing dog. Full breath in through your nose. Smooth breath out your nose and slowly walk your hands to the back of your mat for Uttanasana. Grab for opposite elbows, let your head hang heavy. So as if your head was like a giant bowling ball, can you feel the weight drip down your spine? Switch out the grip, whichever elbow is in front, grab for the opposite elbow. Hmm. And slowly release your hands to the mat. Toe heel your feet as wide as the mat. Your feet are still going to be parallel with one another. A little bend in the knees to protect, protect your backs of your legs. Interlace your fingers behind your back. Press the thumbs onto the low back. And rather than trying to straightening, straighten the arms all the way to start, can you keep the elbows bent and just drive your triceps toward the front of your mat? Drop the crown of your head down toward the earth. And then maybe, just maybe, start to straighten out the arms. But notice how starting with the bent elbows really isolates the shoulders. Rather than using the palms to drive you overhead, really focus on driving the triceps forward. Bend into your left knee, straighten out the right, and then gaze over your right shoulder. Can you breathe all along the front of your right chest? Big breath in. And exhale, come back to center, bend into your right knee, gaze over your left shoulder. Breathe fully across the front of your body and come back to center, slowly release your hands down to the mat. Toe heel your feet back to hip width distance apart and then walk yourself back out to that downward facing dog. Come back to the steady inhale and exhale of your breath. Let that anchor you here and let it be this rhythmic inhale, exhale, ebb, flow. Just like a wave pulling in and out to shore. Hover right foot, three-legged down dog kick, inhale. Exhale, knee to nose, shift forward. Can you press down firmly into the palms? Drive your left heel back as you pull the right knee forward. Protract the shoulders again by lifting up, filling the space between the shoulder blades. 
and step right foot next to right thumb tip. Keep up your back toes tucked under, drop your back knee down onto the mat. Crescent moon Anjane Asana. So in this variation, we're stacking the back hip directly over the back knee. Reach up through the fingers and scrub right heel back toward the midline. Take a deep breath in. Listen here, exhale, low flying crescent. Lift back knee, reach arms by your sides. Can you continue to pull the right hip back? Slight tuck of the chin so that there is an energy line from your back heel all the way through the crown of your head. Lower the belly slightly, so it's just hovering over your front leg. And then reach the arms forward, inhale, power lunge. Can you continue to scrub that right heel back toward the midline just like we were doing earlier? Fire up so much through the right leg like you are ready to launch forward. Take one more breath. Release left palm down, right arm to the sky. Gentle twist. You may want to come up high onto your left fingertips or even use a block underneath your left hand. Gaze up toward the sky, feel the inner thighs scissoring in toward one another. And can you soften the shoulders away from your ears? Big breath. Slowly release left palm down. Pivot onto the outer edge of the left foot and you're just gonna step back into Vashisthasana side plank. Bring the big toes together to touch sliver of space between the heels. Can you pull the crown of the head back in line with your shoulders and your hips? A lot of times we jet the chest, chin forward because we're so used to that technology life. <laughs> big inhale. Lower down onto your right forearm, forearm plank. Roll onto the outer edge of the right foot, lift left arm high. Same work, stack left hip over right. Can you draw the right shoulder blade down the back? Lift the hips just another inch, big breath. And exhale, release forearms onto the mat, forearm plank. Keeping the arms parallel, we're not gonna be here very long. I tried and did this Cool transition, so we're gonna play with it today and see how we like it. But first, we're gonna move into dolphin, so walk the feet in a little bit. Bend the knees as much as you need. I know it's early in class. But can you continue to wrap the triceps back? Spin your biceps forward. And then listen here, friends, gaze forward. You're gonna press a lot of weight into your palms and start to visualize that chaturanga push-up. Take a big breath in. And then exhale, shift forward into chaturanga. Upward facing dog, big inhale. Downward facing dog, lift the hips. Not so bad, right? Just that looks a little crazy at first. Full breath in. And exhale. Left leg high, inhale, three-legged down dog kick. Exhale, knee to nose. Hold for a few breaths here. Find those small micro movements that let you feel strong. Just ground down through the L's of the palms. Can you grip the earth like you have two basketballs underneath your hands? Gaze forward, look forward, step forward, left foot next to left thumb tip, drop back knee down, keep the toes tucked under, crescent moon anjane. So again, it's a little bit of a deeper stretch in the front of the right hip. Draw left heel back. Feel the low belly lift. And continue to scrub, physically drag the left heel back slightly. You'll feel the hamstrings turn on, which is fun. Big breath. And low flying crescent, reach arm. I crown your head toward the front of the mat. Gaze down toward your front foot. Continue to pull left hip back in line with the left heel. Reach the arms forward, power lunge, big breath in. Exhale, right hand down, left arm high, gentle twist. 
So again, find what modifications you need today. Maybe that's a block underneath your hand. Maybe it's coming up on your fingertips, dropping back knee. There's always a way to modify a pose. Full breaths. And ground your right hand if it's not already there. Pivot onto the outer edge of the right foot. Step it back, Vashistasana, side plank. Big toes together to touch. Sliver of space between the heels. Pull your left hip forward in line with the right. Big inhale. Exhale, release left forearm down. Vashistasana on the left side on your forearm. Reach right arm high. Continue to draw left shoulder down your back. Draw right hip forward a little bit. I know it's an easy one that we always forget. I know for me at least. Inhale. And exhale, right forearm onto the mat. Forearm plank. Spread the fingers wide. And again, notice here how the shoulders are feeling. Are they starting to warm up a little bit? Not be gentle. Start to walk your toes in, dolphin pose. Bend the knees as much as you need. And continue to ground down into the forearms. Start by gazing back toward your heels. Can you lift your low belly and notice if that changes the sensation in the shoulders? Gaze forward on your inhale. Same thing, bend the knees slightly. Exhale, shift forward, chaturanga push up. Upward facing dog, breathe in. Downward facing dog, breathe out. Full inhale. And exhale. Let's move a bit. Bend the knees, set the gaze, step float, hop, top of the mat. Halfway lift, inhale. Exhale, we bow and fold. Rise up, inhale, reach arms to the sky. And then listen here, create cactus arms with your hands, fists with your hands. Draw the elbows down toward the hips. Can you gaze up toward the sky? Squeeze shoulder blades in toward one another. Big breath in, Anuvitasana, baby back bend. Reach arms high, inhale. Swan dive forward, arms come out, forward fold. Halfway lift, inhale, Ardha Uttanasana. Exhale, plant the palms, step the right foot back, then the left. Listen here, we're going to do a little bit of a variation today. Drop down onto your knees. Bend the elbows, bring your chest to the earth, and then your chin. Slide forward into a baby cobra, inhale. Exhale, tap forehead down, press it back, downward, facing dog. Full inhale. And exhale. Big breath. Set you off on the next one. And then you'll flow on your own for the last round of that modified Surya A. Bend the knees, set the gaze, step float, hop, top of the mat. Halfway lift, inhale. Exhale, we bow and fold together. Rise up, inhale, arms to the sky. Exhale, baby, bend, cactus the arms, open the heart. Inhale, arms high. Exhale, bow and fold. Halfway lift, inhale. Exhale, plant the palm, step left foot back, then right. Drop down to your knees, chest, and chin. Slide forward, baby cobra, inhale. Exhale, tap forehead down, press it back. Downward facing dog. Full, inhale, exhale, give yourself two more breaths here. And when you're ready, you can take flight on this last round of Surya A on your own. If you liked the knees, chest, chin variation, feel free to take that. If you like the traditional, do that. It's your own little flow time for a moment here. As you're ready. There's no right or wrong. If you forget what to do, just move with whatever your body tells you to do.
And we'll all meet back into downward facing dog. Full breaths. Right leg high, inhale, three-legged down dog kick. Exhale, knee to nose. Once again, drop the sit bones down. So don't let that booty pop up. Can you drop the hips lower? Pull the knee forward as the left heel drags back. Step through low lunge. Same thing we did earlier. Drop back, knee down, crescent moon, Anjaneyasana. Keep those back toes tucked under, hip points lifting up. Big breath. Exhale, low flying crescent. Same work. Ground down into the right heel so much that you could actually lift your right toes off of the mat. Pull right hip back. Drive back through the left heel. Listen here. You're going to drive with your left arm. Reverse warrior. Spin your back foot down. Windmill the arms open. Reverse your warrior. Press down into your right heel a lot. Get light on your back hand. Gaze underneath your right armpit. Full breath in. And warrior two. Just land with grace. Arms open wide. You can gaze over the side of your mat or maybe over your index finger. Perhaps even close the eyes. Observe the body in space, proprioception. Get a little bit deeper into that front lunge. Find two more inches, friends. And then take a deep breath in. Shift forward six inches. Exhale, launch forward, half moon, Ardha Chandrasana. Karate kick the back wall with your foot. Allow the toes to slightly turn inward. If you were to gaze back at your back foot, you could actually see that you are in a heel-to-heel -heel alignment or a triangle on one leg. If you're one of those people that need a chapasana in your practice, you can bend the knee and grab for the foot. Otherwise, stay as you are. Maybe even a block underneath your right hand. Final breath. And exhale, release left hand down, standing splits. So let the left heel drive up toward the sky. You have a couple of options here, friends. Take a balance challenge by walking your hands back. Grab for your right ankle with your right hand and let your head drop. You can stay there or grab the ankle with both hands. Or maybe you're really craving some fun play by driving the left heel up to the sky couple of handstand hops, but wherever you are, we'll meet back through a vinyasa in downward facing dog in just three breaths. So take your time wherever you are. Full inhale and exhale. Again, big breath. Side, left leg high, three-legged down dog kick. Exhale, knee to nose, pull it in. Draw the low ribs down toward the navel. Ground into the palms, gaze forward, step forward. Drop the back knee down, crescent moon on jene. back toes tucked under. Exhale, low flying crescent, reach the arms by your sides. Pull left hip back. Low belly lifting, activate the back leg, and then reverse your warrior, driving with the right arm. Spin the back heel down, paint the sky, left arm back. Like you're high-fiving the back of the room. Can you really reach, reach, reach? Meanwhile, keep bending into that front knee. Full breath. Warrior two, come right back into it. Land with grace. Maybe turn the outer edges of your lips upward. Hmm. So for that back leg, 
You're really almost in the wide-legged forward fold position. So your back foot is slightly turned in. You can really ground down through the knife edge of the back foot. Meanwhile, front knee is tracking in line with the second toe. Take one more breath. Reach forward six inches, maybe grab a block, and launch forward into half moon Ardha Chandrasana. If your hand is on a block, it should be toward the pinky toe side edge of your foot. Maybe a slight micro bend into your left knee. That way you can continue to pull the left sitting bone back toward the back of the mat, toward the right heel. Reaching up and maybe take that chapasana if you did it on the other side. Grabbing for the foot. If not, all good, hang out. Full breath. Chapasanas, let go of the foot. And we'll all meet down standing splits. Your hands can be on blocks if you need it. Otherwise, bring your hands onto the mat. If you're taking the balance challenge on this side, wrap your left ankle with your left hand. Maybe bring your nose down toward your shin. Or aspire the nose toward the shin. <laughs> And if you're playing with handstands, ground your palms right in front of the face. Come up high onto the left toes using the inner thigh of the right leg. Drive it up toward the sky and then take a few hops. And then maybe meet us back. And downward facing dog as you're ready. Full breath in, smooth breath out. Lift forearms away from earth, big breath. Bend the knees, set the gaze, step float, hop, top of the mat. Halfway lift, breathe in. Exhale, we bow and fold, big toes to touch, Utkatasana, chair pose, sink low, reach high. Stand all the way up, offer it up. Palms kiss overhead, hands come to heart center. The chair pose, drag the fingertips on the earth, lift the arms up. Can you sink your hips back so you can see all 10 toes sticking out in front of your kneecaps? Notice if the ribs are flailing out, can you soften them in? Big breath and fold it down. Halfway lift, inhale. Exhale, plant the palms, step, float, hop, back through your vinyasa. Or just meet us in down dog. Full breath. Listen here, friends, a little bit of change. Left leg high. We're going to play with something. Left toes are pointing down toward the mat. You're going to gaze forward and bend your right knee. I'm going to hop the right foot forward to the front of the mat, step left foot back, preparing for warrior one. So your right shin should be in front. Rise up, warrior one. Inhale. Exhale, release. Hands down. Step it back. Vinyasa. Downward facing dog. Right leg up and back. Same thing. Toes are facing down. Bend left knee. Gaze forward. You're going to hop a couple times to bring the left foot to the front of the mat or just one hop. Stepping right foot back, warrior one, inhale. Rise up. Vinyasa, hands to the mat, step it back. Down dog. Full breath in. Smooth breath out. Inhale, bend the knees, set the gaze. Exhale, step, float, hop, top of the mat. Halfway lift. Exhale, fold. Utkatasana, chair pose. Stand all the way up, offer it up. Hands come to heart center. Sama Sitihi, close your eyes. Full breath in together as a community. Smooth breath out. So if you'd like to play with that different variation of kicking up in your Surya Namaskar B, that's definitely an option. If you just want to step forward like you usually do to get into that sense of flow, that's also an option. But we're going to do two more rounds on our own of Surya Namaskar B. If you don't know where you're going, just watch up here. Chair pose. But I feel most of you are regs. <laughs> and fold forward. Halfway. And take off on your own.
two rounds of stereo beats. always skip these as well if you'd rather just take a child's pose that's there for you When you're done with that second round, you can rest in a child's pose or maybe stay in down dog, but no rush. Notice how the breath and the heart rate have gone up a little bit. And if you're in down dog, let's just all meet onto our knees. We're praying for Anahatasana. So we come into tabletop and you're just gonna walk your hands forward keeping your hips stacked over your knees. Reach the arms forward. Let your forehead drop onto the mat. If that feels pretty accessible to you, maybe bring your chin onto the mat. Gazing forward toward the front edge of your mat. Press firmly into your shins. And relax the shoulders away from the ears. Big breath. And then slowly just walk your hands back. Send your hips down and back, child's pose. Stack your palms. Let your forehead, your third eye center rest on to the backs of the hands. Breathe into the back body. Full breath in. Open mouth, exhale. Again, big breath. And exhale. In your own time, just make your way back to downward facing dog, no rush. We're gonna keep this train running, right leg high, here we go, three-legged down dog kick, we've been here before, just step through low lunge. Maybe grab your blocks, place them on either edge of your right foot. Rise up high crescent lunge. So when you're high crescent lunge, I know for me it's really nice to bend the back knee so I can really lift the hips up. And then once you get into that place, then maybe start to straighten out the back leg. Same actions though, pull right hip back, scrubbing right heel back toward midline. Reach up toward the sky. If the biceps cannot frame the ears, all good. Draw the biceps over the cheekbones. Pinky tips toward the front of the mat. Find length, big breath. And then exhale. Shift forward six inches, launch forward, warrior three. So this is where the blocks come in handy. I know for me, especially when we do different types of workouts on different days, Yoga, your legs are like dead, or maybe you're just not having it today. <laughs> and the hands on the blocks are a really good place to be. Dial down the left hip. You can stay here, of course, hands heart center, arms forward. But wherever you are, try to continue to 
pull right hip back and lift low belly. Final three breaths. Can they be long and free? Last one. If your hands aren't already on the blocks, bring your hands down onto the mat or onto the blocks. Ground down into your left palm, reach your right arm up to the sky, revolved half moon. Keep dragging back through your back toes. Pull the crown of your head forward. And can you draw the shoulder blades in toward the center and feel your chest open a little further? Big breath. Listen here, friends. You're going to draw the right arm down. Pull left knee in. Rise all the way up. Single leg Tadasana. Start with the left knee into your chest. Grab for your shin with your right hand and just reach left arm back. Coming into another twist. If you're feeling good here, you can always grab for the outer edge of the left foot. But again, notice if you can pull shoulder blades down the back. Maybe gaze back towards your back hand. Imagining like you're cutting your mat in half. And if you fall out of it, all good. <laughs> Maybe there's a wall next to you like me. You can use it as a nice little prop. Big inhale. Come back to center, reach both arms high, extend left leg forward, take a full breath in. Keep reaching through the fingers, slowly lower left foot so it's hovering next to the right. Take a big breath in and exhale, left foot next to right, chair pose. Full inhale, prayer twist, left elbow outside, right knee. Gaze over your right shoulder. If you're in the mood for a side crow, you can do that. Or you can stay here or maybe just place a block underneath your booty and sit on the block. We've got a lot of options for you. But wherever you are, hold for three. Two. We'll all meet back into chair. One and forward fold. Halfway lift. Exhale, plant the palms, step, float, hop back, vinyasa. Downward facing dog. Full breaths. Left leg high, inhale. Exhale, knee to nose, step through, low lunge. Come up high onto those fingertips. Little bend in the back knee, rise up, crescent lunge. Find that stability. It's literally the same posture that we were doing earlier, except now the back knee is hovering off of the mat. Same action of hip points lifting, scrubbing left heel back. And now maybe try to keep that as you straighten the back leg. Find length through the fingers. Take one more breath deep in your lunge. Exhale, bring the hands to the heart or just launch forward, warrior three. I have to scoot back because I have this plant in my way. <laughs> Dial down the back toes. Arms reaching forward, hands at heart center or hands on blocks underneath shoulders. There's no right or wrong, but if you are feeling any tension behind the back of the left knee, just a little bend in the knee is great. Even if you're not, a bend in the knee is also great. <laughs> Take one more breath. Find your edge. Release hands down onto blocks or onto the earth. Supported warrior three. Ground down into your right palm. Lift left arm high. Revolved half moon. So that taffy analogy comes in very handy here. Like the back foot is the back end of the taffy getting pulled in one direction. The crown of the head is the other. And as you do that, can you feel length through the spine? From there, once you have that length, start to draw your gaze up toward the sky. Maybe the right hip dips a little bit. That's okay. Traditionally, the right hip's lifted, but either or is great. Big breath. 
Slowly release, left hand down, bring right knee into chest, rise all the way up, hold the right knee with your hand. Grab for the knee with your left hand, reach the right arm back. So again, notice here, can you pull the right shoulder blade underneath you? If you like to stay here, you can, or grab for the outer edge of the foot and extend the leg forward, whichever you prefer. But stack those shoulders over your hips, over your heel. And if you fall, all good, giggle and just come right back in. Or find a chair to use to balance. Maybe gaze over your back hand. And then slowly come back to center, reach your arms high. Extend the right leg forward. You're holding for three, two, and slowly lower down, right foot meets the left, one, hover, right foot next to left, reach up through the fingers, and sink down into chair pose, Utkatasana. Left hip is probably on fire, hands to heart center, prayer twist, right elbow outside of left knee. Again, the, the side may feel a little bit different than the other, you can take a block, stick it underneath your booty, sit down on it. New all-time favorite thing to do. <laughs> Other layers is taking that side curl by placing your hands out to the side or just staying in your prayer twist. But wherever you are, find somewhere that you can sustain for three breaths. If you're flying, come back to chair meeting us. Utkatasana, reach both arms high. Exhale, fold forward, plant the palms, rinse that one out for sure with a vinyasa. Downward facing dog. Full inhale, sigh it out, exhale. And then slowly make your way down onto your knees. Take a sip of water, towel off if you need. I'm definitely dripping. We're going to play with our peak today, which is actually a variation of chin stand. So if you have blocks, cool. If you don't have blocks, maybe grab some books, some cans, or just work on strengthening the shoulders. Um, how we'll get into it today, I'm going to demo it, and then we'll do it together. It's going to be really similar to some of those drills we were doing earlier today. So how we'll start is in a tabletop. Blocks should be directly in front of the palms. I would say at the medium height, that's a good place to begin with the medium height. So watch me first and then we can do it together. From here, we're gonna do that same exercise of just extending right leg back to start. Lift the leg and you're gonna chaturanga push up. Let the shoulders rest on the blocks. The shoulders, the block should be wide enough depending on your size to have the shoulders comfortably sit on the blocks. From here, you're gonna tuck your left toes under and lift the leg. This is layer two. Layer three, you can begin to kick the leg up and start to play. That's just the variation we're gonna play with today. If you're not having any blocks and you don't feel comfortable kicking up, then you can just take the push up and prep and just kind of kick this leg high. That's what we'll play with. So as you're ready, let's do the other side together. Come into tabletop, extend left leg back. Draw elbows back, lift back leg. Take that chaturanga push-up, let the shoulders rest on the block, tuck right toes under, lift the leg, lift the knee. Layer one, two, you can stay here or begin to kick. I personally find it actually harder with the blocks, but take what you need. And we'll do the other side together. As you're done, come right back to that tabletop. Shake out the wrists. <sighs> How are we doing? Give me like a really obvious thumbs up so I can maybe see you thumbs down. Cool. All right, let's try it one more time on the other side. I'm going to do it without blocks this time, but I'll cue it with the block. Okay? So stick the opposite leg out. I think it was the right that we hadn't done yet. Maybe it was the left, <laughs> whichever one you haven't done yet. And then from here, you're going to bend the elbows, lift the back leg off. Set the shoulders on the blocks or on the earth. Lift the leg high, lift the knee. Begin to kick. And 
as you're ready, come back to downward facing dog. Meet in a child's pose. I come say hi. Full breath in through the nose. Sigh it out. <sighs> Big breath in, big breath out. Drop down to into your knees, child's pose. Rest your hands on top of one another and let your forehead rest. So this is just a really passive way to do child's pose. If you'd rather have your arms by your side, it's also a good place to be but breathe fully into your back body. So fill the back of your ribs, fill up with air. Slowly walk your hands forward, press yourself up. And you're just going to come onto your seat, swivel your legs out long in front of you. So chin stands a really big back bend. So we're just going to do a little bit of core here for a sec before we plop ourselves onto our back. So grab the backs of your shins, sit up on your sitting bones. Navasana, boat pose, prepare. Lift the chest so you feel the strength in your back body. You can stay here or maybe bring your toes off the mat. Widen through the collarbones. Perhaps reach the arms out long in front of you. Maybe extend the legs out straight. But we're just putting the core back together from a lot of those heart openers that we we're doing. Lower down, low boat. You're hovering here for three. Just two. And plop it down one. <sighs> long body stretch. Reach arms overhead, take a big breath in through the nose. Open mouth, exhale. <sighs> Reach your arms to your sides, bend your knees. Cross your right ankle over your left. Thread the needle, bring your left knee up toward your chest. Reach around for the back side of your left leg. Flex the feet a lot. craving a little bit deeper of a hip sensation, you can grab for the shin. If you're craving for an even deeper hip sensation, draw the base of the foot into your left elbow crease, like you're holding a little baby, and wrap your right elbow around your right knee, and you're just gonna extend the left leg forward. But again, these are all layers. Left foot can be rested, it could be bent, just depends on your body and your hips today. Start to slow down your breath. So we're coming down the other side of the mountain. Let the quality of your breath and your practice change. Knowing that whatever your practice was today was enough. Release left foot down, keeping the figure four position. Cactus your arms out. Bump your hips a little bit to the right and just drop your left knee down toward the left and gaze over your right knee. If you'd like, you can use your left leg to continue to find a hip opener with the right leg. Your leg's still in a figure four. Perhaps close your eyes if you prefer to wake up to see. Just feeling into the sensations of your body. The air along your body. the left knee back to center, 
ground both of your feet flat and just shake it out for a sec, switching it out other side, cross the left ankle over the right, take a figure four, wrap around the back of the right leg, flex your feet pr to protect your knees. Again, you can stay here and that's perfect. Maybe use your left elbow to guide your inner thigh open. Pulling back those elements of contentment, of gratitude for this body, this breath, this community. you took it deeper feel free to take on the layers of grabbing the shin maybe or cradling your left leg with your arms extending the right leg wherever you are Release the right foot down, keeping the figure four position. Bump the hips over to the left and just drop the knee over toward the right. Cactus out the arms, gaze over left shoulder. Again, maybe use your right leg to continue to open up through the left hip. Feeling the passive stretch here. earlier in class there's a lot of effort that's put into the class and we really work on finding ease in the effort it's really quite the opposite here for many of us when the practice turns down when our mind slows down we stop moving as much the body is in a state of ease but the uh, there must be a lot of effort for the mind to stay here and present on the mat just observe those dualities Inhale, bring the legs back to center, shake it out. Pull the right knee into the chest. Reach around for the back of the hamstring, extend the leg up to the sky and just reach left leg forward. So if you have a strap, you can always wrap it around the top of the right leg. I know I didn't cue that. But for today, you can just interlace your fingers behind your hamstring or maybe wrap around your calf. Even if you're a hyper bendy flexi person, notice if you can find neutrality in the hips. Drive the right sitting bone forward. And the natural curvatures of your low back will turn on and that's when the real nice deep stretch turns on. Big breath. And slowly release that leg, switch it out other side, both knees bent, feet flat on the mat to start. Extend left leg high, interlace fingers behind the back of the left leg. So you can stay here if this is enough. If you'd like more, extend right leg straight onto the mat. Even if, again, you're really strong and this is really difficult, maybe bend the knee a little bit, but wherever you are, even if you're flexible, you draw the left hip down. Flex the toes back, back toward your face. Find that ease. Breathe into any sensation that you feel until you no longer have that deep sensation and then find new space that you can tune your energy to, tune your focus to. Slowly bend your right knee, place the sole of the foot onto the mat if it's not already there, and then bend the left knee, place the sole of the foot flat. Shake it out, happy baby. Grab the edges of the feet. Maybe rock side to side along the safe ground if that feels okay on your back. Straighten out a leg. Maybe foot five your neighbor if you're practicing with someone. Switch it out other side. 
and slowly bend the knees, hug both your knees into your chest. Bring your third eye center up toward your kneecaps, pressing your eyes into your knees, squeeze your entire body into a tight, tight, tight little ball. Take a deep breath in. Exhale, Shavasana. Get big. Get expansive. Really take up space on your mat in your room. Wiggle the shoulder blades underneath you to prop the heart up toward the sky. Palms face up on the mat beside you. Pelvis heavy on the earth. Relax your jaw, unfurl your brow. Notice if there's any tension in the face. You can just fully relax here. For just a few moments, content exactly where you are here in this moment with what you're doing. What you're being. That'll call you out as it's time. Before you start to move the body, can you just pause here for a moment and observe the sensations? Observe how you feel now versus where you were 60 minutes or so ago. And let this moment, let this practice be a reminder that you have the sense of peace at any point in time that you need it. It's there. Place your hands over the front of your body. Finding gratitude for the physical body, the breath, and the heartbeat. Keeping your eyes closed, reach your right arm overhead, bend your knees and roll onto your right side using your bicep as a pillow. And slowly press yourself up into a seated meditation position with your eyes closed. Placing your hands on the tops of your thighs, onto your knees, grounding down. And then turn the palms up on the tops of your knees, observing that sensation and how it might feel different. Slowly join the hands at the heart space, thumb to heart, heart to thumb, drop the chin down to the chest. Pulling that gaze down and in, take a full breath in together. Sigh it out with your exhale. <sighs> Bring your thumbs to your third eye. And as always, Loka, Samasta, Sukino, Bhavantu, may all beings everywhere know peace, and love, and happiness. Lift the gaze, inhale. We bow down together, sealing in our practice. Thank you so much for joining me, everybody. Namaste.